Hello, I'm Margaret Goodell, professor at Baylor College of Medicine, and this is Grant Challen, a postdoctoral fellow in my lab. Today we would like to tell you about some recent work of ours on hematopoietic stem cells that was just published in Cell Stem Cell. The hematopoietic system is comprised of two major branches of differentiated cells, the lymphoid and the myeloid cells. The hematopoietic stem cells reside in the bone marrow and are defined by their capacity to give rise to both of these branches over a long period of time. The traditional view is that the hematopoietic stem cell population is a uniform population of cells and that each stem cell has an equal propensity to generate both of the major cell types. We began to realize that this view was somewhat simplistic. Two groups recently showed that the marrow appeared to contain at least two distinct stem cell types that differed in their ability to give rise to the major branches. This was a very new and exciting idea and we were interested in investigating how these stem cell types might be differentially regulated. In order to investigate that, we first needed a way to purify them. In our lab, we noticed by flow cytometry that the hematopoietic stem cell population exhibited slightly different dye staining properties in a population that was otherwise very uniform with respect to expression of cell surface markers used for HSC purification. We wondered whether dye staining could be used as a marker to segregate different HSC subtypes. We transplanted single hematopoietic stem cells based on their dye staining capacity into mice whose bone marrow had been ablated by lethal irradiation. We monitored the output of our test HSCs by tracking the peripheral blood of our recipient mice. Here we have myeloid cells depicted in red, B cells in blue, and T cells in green. We noticed a striking trend in that our transplanted HSCs that had the lowest amount of dye staining were biased towards myeloid cell production, whereas our hematopoietic stem cell that had slightly higher staining of dye were biased towards lymphoid cell generation. To test that our cells were traditional HSCs, we repurified the progeny of our single transplanted stem cells and retransplanted them into secondary recipient mice. Our test cells were defined as HSCs by traditional criteria such as extensive self-renewal and trilineage differentiation. But more strikingly, we noticed that the repopulation of the peripheral blood in our recipient mice mirrored that that was seen in our primary clone, indicating that the lineage bias phenotype of our individual stem cells was a stable phenotype that was transplantable over multiple transplant generations. These experiments established that not only were there two distinct hematopoietic stem cell types, but that we had a reproducible method to separate them. To begin to address how these stem cells might be differentially regulated, we used gene expression profiling to compare them. One major difference was that several components of the TGF-beta signaling pathway were more highly expressed in the myeloid-biased hematopoietic stem cells. We first tested the effect of TGF-beta-1 on HSC subtypes in an in vitro assay. To do this, we sorted individual HSCs of the two different subtypes into single wells of 96 well plates containing methacult media, some of which were then supplemented with TGF-beta-1. We noticed that over two weeks in culture, Addition of TGF-beta-1 greatly accelerated the rate of colony formation from myeloid by stem cells and also increased the overall total colony size. In contrast, addition of TGF-beta-1 to lymphoid by stem cells significantly inhibited hematopoietic colony generation. This suggests to us that TGF-beta-1 has distinct actions on individual HSC subtypes and represents a possible mechanism to control their differential activation. As you'll see in our paper, we performed a number of in vitro and in vivo experiments to test the effect of TGF-beta-1 on different HSC subtypes. It became clear to us that TGF-beta-1 acted to enhance the activity of myeloid bias stem cells while inhibiting the activity of lymphoid bias stem cells. This represents the first potential mechanism to control the activation of individual HSC subtypes in vivo. So where does this take us? We return to the traditional view. Instead of a, a single hematopoietic stem cell population that gives rise to the lymphoid and myeloid branches, we see that instead there is a consortium of distinct hematopoietic stem cell types that are inherently predisposed to generate the two major branches of the system. All of these hematopoietic stem cells can generate both lineages, but they have their clear preferences. This suggests that in vivo they may behave very little like the omnipotent HSC that we have come to believe in. We've shown that we can distinguish these cell types by their dye staining behavior, they have different proliferative properties, and they have distinct responsiveness to TGF-beta. In our study, we've shown that distinct HSC subtypes are present in the bone marrow, which have inherent proliferation, differentiation, and self-renewal capabilities. Physiologically, 
This may allow the hematopoietic system to respond differently to various stimuli, such as different types of pathogenic infection. From a clinical standpoint, this study may pave the way for more appropriate selection of HSC subtypes for bone marrow transplantation or potential gene therapy applications. Finally, this study may have implications for the study of hematological disease. It may help explain some of the cellular and behavioral heterogeneity seen in genetically similar leukemias and may also help explain the increased prevalence of myeloproliferative disorders in the elderly as we show that the myelobiased HSC compartment expands in the bone marrow with age. Eventually, we hope that this study may lead to potentially new therapeutic treatment strategies for these devastating human diseases. Thank, Thank you. you.